Some other news from around the world, from Mexico. The New York Times reported today that one of Mexico's drug cartels infiltrated the attorney general's office and made monthly payments of hundreds of thousands of dollars to officials in that office. Five of those officials have now been arrested. The story also says that a cartel member infiltrated the U.S. Embassy and may have leaked information about U.S. drug enforcement operations to his bosses in the cartel. We want to get more on Mexico's drug cartels from Shannon O'Neill, a specialist on Latin America at the Council of Foreign Relations. Ms. O'Neill, thanks very much for being with us. Glad to be here. So were you surprised to hear that there had been apparently some infiltration done at the Attorney General's office in Mexico by drug cartels? You know, I'm not surprised. It's unfortunate, but it's not surprising. And that's because both the justice system and the police forces in Mexico from 70 years under the old political system were really a political arm. So they were used as both carrots and sticks. Carrots in the sense if you were with the political regime, you would benefit from impunity if you did bad things. And sticks were if you were against the political regime, they often brought out the police force and even the justice system against you. So for 70 years, the system didn't function the way the U.S. system works or we try to make it work. Uh, and so the fact that we see corruption, we see this not be an independent judiciary the way one expect. And so these problems do exist. And if you are a drug lord, that's the very office you want to infiltrate, isn't it? Exactly. And the problem is not only are they, Mexico trying to transform the system away from what it was to a real functioning ju justice system and police system, but they're facing at the same time exponentially increasing number of dollars going in from the drug cartel. So if you want to protect your drug business, what you want to focus on first is the justice system, police system, and they're both there in the attorney general's office in Mexico. Well, what about the report saying that there is possibly was a mole within the U.S. Embassy? You know, it's distinctly possible. The DEA and other organizations within the U.S. Embassy work very closely with the Attorney's General Office. And in fact, the Attorney General has really been a big promoter of reform and change and really trying to increase security in Mexico to improve the relationship both the United States on the U.S. border and in Mexico. So he's really seen as an ally for the United States. So there's been a lot of work together on all levels with this organization. So given the interchange between the Attorney General's Office and the DEA, if there is corruption on one side, it could and looks like did infiltrate the U.S. Embassy. How do you combat this kind of problem when you seem to have unlimited resources of money? And I'm talking about the drug lords. How do you fight bribery if you're Mexico? You know, this is really the key challenge for Mexico and its democracy going forward. How do you strengthen both the police and the judiciary and make them independent organizations that are fairly clean? How do you get them away from what's seen as huge corruption to something that's particularly to clean with very few isolated instances of corruption? And you know, it's going to take political will. It will take some political reform. But it's really going to be a long-term process of new training and vetting of officers and, and judicial officials that cannot be solved overnight. Shannon O'Neill from the Council on Foreign Relations. Thank you. Thank you.